Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another review or sort of unboxing. We have today is um, the Banging X16 Typhoon. It's a GPS quadcopter. This is a better picture of it. Um, this is not really an unboxing. I already have this quadcopter. I've been flying for a little bit, but this is like an overview of what I have experienced and, and how I modded it. Um, this quadcopter, there is three versions. Originally, when it first came out, it had no GPS, it had no barometer, no altitude hole, and the motors were red. And everyone fell in love with that quadcopter because it was brushless motors. It was a toy gray slash hobby gray quadcopter with brushless motor with a great uh, flight experience. Um, but it discontinued. And then they became the version two, which was the barometer altitude hole. And it's another picture of the back of it. Um, actually, this is the front of it. Let me see. It's the back of it. it looks like the back of it. Um, kind of weird angle of it, actually. But anyway, they came out with version 2, uh, which is a barometer altitude hole. And that was okay. And then people wanted a GPS version, and they finally got the GPS version. And this is the GPS. And, and the way you can tell on the box they actually put a loose they use the same box and they just put a little sticker saying it's GPS so this is my banging X16 Typhoon GPS quadcopter and as you can see there's a lot of mods uh, the one of the first things you can po probably see is I have a, a two axis gimbal by Wokaria the 2D gimbal and this is a great gimbal to get it's inexpensive and it works great held by a velcro strap that I got from Amazon um, it's very inexpensive and it come in, in, a, in a couple dozen and this and this this zip tie this is very strong zip tie it can hold like over 100 pounds so this is an overkill on the zip tie but it, it's about two feet long and I cut the excess and it held and it holds the um, you can see it holds the the gimbal pretty tight and securely and I'm using a first generation Xiaomi camera which is a lot cheaper than a GoPro the only problem is the um, the Wakaria 2D gimbal does not fit uh, very well it's not compatible with the Xiaomi camera but I use some rubber bands to hold it and I actually put some foam behind the camera to absorb to absorb the vibration and I actually put some foam underneath the bottom of the gimbal mount. So it's a, it's hard mounted, but there's foam in between the, the quadcopter and the gimbal. And there's some, you can see it has the ball dampers to absorb the shock. It's being powered by a two cell battery. And a lot of the guys out there are using the tarantula X, I forgot what it's called, Tarantula X6, I believe. Um, the Tarantula, the toy grade Tarantula battery is two cell, and a lot of people have been using that. But I'm actually using a very skinnier, flatter battery. It's the Hubson H502E. And it's less capacity, but it's two cell, and... It has a JST plug and it works really well. I'll show you right now as I plug it in. 
And what I like about it, it's lighter than the tarantula battery and it's very narrow and it fits there perfectly with Velcro. And you can see right there how, how great that fits in there. And it's very inexpensive battery. And as it, and I'm gonna power it up so you can see how it looks when I power up the gimbal. Let me just let it initialize. Awesome. So you can see as I tilt the quadcopter how steady that is. So if the quadcopter goes this way or that way or forward or back. Mm -hmm. The camera is pretty much level. It just looks like an animation on the camera. Yeah, it does. Pretty cool, right? This keeps it level at all times. So if I go this way or this way or forwards or backwards, it does it very hard. It works really hard to keep it level. So let me shut that off. And let it just sit there. Now, another thing you probably saw when I rose the quadcopter is I actually added some foam feet. I was having problems at times with this quadcopter when it was landing with heavy winds, it was tipping over and it was falling this way or sideways and the propellers were going into the grass. Wow, I feel like I've never flown a quad before, the way she flies. <laughs> Whoa! I'm drifting in the wind. Please land. God. Okay, like I said, the winds are like 10. And she is everywhere. Everywhere. So I'm going to take these props off. I'm gonna put the stock props on and see maybe that made it makes a difference. I'm not sure, but give that a shot. I just want to land her gently as much as much as possible. She's on low rates now. I'm gonna bring her down. <laughs> oh my god. She landed like a dead bug. She looks like a dead, dead bug. <laughs> All right. Cutting down throttle. Wow, I did not like that land. And shutting off. Wow, 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 wow. I'm going to take this all the way to the end of the field, raise her up. She does climb. If she's really low, she'll climb up high and then come back. But if, she, if she's already high as she, the way she is right now, she won't go any higher because she doesn't need to. So she's about, I'm going to say, 100 meters away from me, 110 meters, something like that, and about... about 60 meters up give or take all right so she's up there fighting the wind she's 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 pretty steady there she's not moving she's pretty far away i'm going to hit this button right here which is the center circle right here this is return to home and she should come back and she is coming back at a very fast rate and she'll she should come back sim very close to the landing pad here not exactly on it but within within you know three feet so she's up there right now she's calculating where she took off she's looking for her home point and she's coming down nice and slow very nice again this quad is a, a budget friendly gps beginner quad for under uh, around 165 us dollars you cannot beat this price this is the 
best bang for your buck for a GPS quad right now. And so come down. Ooh. Unfortunately, she she tipped over. The wind got her. And she's coming down. She's pretty close to the home point. Unfortunately, the wind is really pushing her. Again, the wind is pushing this way. So let's see if she can land without. Come on, darling, you can do this. You got this. Slow, slow, slow. And no. And sometimes it landed square, but other times it actually tipped over and there was a problem. So I, I got the ideas from the XKX380 if you look at that quadcopter, it has um, flat, round feet at the bottom. So I got these foam pads from... Sometimes when you order toys, you get these little foam, foam round on the gimbals of the transmitter. They have these little foam things to protect the sticks. And I, I always save everything I get that I might be able to use later. So I got a couple of the XK transmitters from other quadcopters and I actually hot glued it on the on the legs of the landing gear and I put some masking tape color masking tape to help for orientation and um, and it's been great it's been landing really good and another thing I did and I'll show pictures of this when I open I actually opened this up and I actually shielded the the GPS even though this says GPS right here even though it says GPS right here, it is there is no GPS here. This is really huh? this is just a fake, fake antenna. The GPS is actually that, that is like oh my god. Yeah, it, it's there's it should be there. It'd be nice if the GPS was actually away from the flight board, but actually the GPS is right under this black screen here, right here. So when I opened it up, there was this foam padding over it, and I and I'll show pictures of it. The foam padding was it's for, it was kind of cheap. I didn't like the way it looked. It, it looked kind of like, you know, it should be better than that to cover up the GPS and the flight board. So I, I ordered some um, EMS, um, electromagnetic uh, interference tape. And I think it's called EMSI. Oh, actually, it's called EMI. Uh, Le electronic Ma Magnetic Interference Tape. Excuse me. I'm, all these uh, shortcuts are hard to remember, but what it is is it helps with the GPS not to get interfered with other radio frequencies and stuff like that. And it, I covered it up with that thin metallic film, and I, I'll show pictures of that. And, and, and it came out good and it has helped my GPS a lot and uh, another thing that I discovered was the soldering was horrible it was some of the soldering points were barely soldered correctly and I recommend highly to open up this quadcopter and double check all the solder points because there was the this has independent ESCs on each of the arms and some of the independent ESC soldering points and some of the flight board soldering points 
were not soldered correctly. I did not re-solder them. I actually hot glued them. And I'll show pictures of that right now. So as you can see, I had to go around looking at every solder point and hot glue it to make sure the wires won't get um, loosened up in flight. God forbid one of the ESC's solder points get loose, this will fall out of the sky. So yeah, this quadcopter is a great price. It's under $160 US, and sometimes it's like $150 or even less. Sometimes it's on sale for $140 US dollars. So it's a great bargain. but. Um, it's some of the things inside of this quad cop that should be checked when you buy it. Um, so that, that's it. What else did I do? Landing fee, the GPS shielding. Uh, I checked the, uh, I hot glued the, the, the solder points. And I almost forgot. I actually did an antenna mod. Uh, you can see right here, I drilled a hole. Now, when you buy this quad copter, the antenna actually lays across right here flat across right here in the bottom of the quadcopter and it's hot glued. So you have to kind of remove the hot glue and 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 uh, it's a little tricky but it's it's easy to do and then what I did was I, I marked it a little hole from the inside and I drilled a hole and I tied the antenna down the leg so it's more horizontally up and down to get better uh, frequency than being laid across this way. So it's more, I should say, vertical up and down. Because it was horizontal this way, and now it's vertical, which will give you more uh, uh, frequency. So I'll show pictures of that next, right now. basically it you know this is basically my franken phantom <laughs> and I, I i highly recommend it because if you're into modern your your quadcopter you buy this quadcopter really cheap and you add a gimbal which i just did as you can see here you know you know and then you can also like i recommend before you can do an antenna mod which is simple, you just drill a hole and you just stick the antenna down and tie it. You can see it behind the leg right here, the antenna, right? Oh. It's right there. Yeah. And um, and then, of course, if you, you, you can do different things for the landing feet. Uh, I personally use these round foam, it, it, you know, foam things to make it more square when it lands. Some people use rods and all that, but that, that's all fine. Whatever creative ideas you have to, to make it more solid landing. And then I recommend, um, you know, G GPS shielding by um, EMI tape from Amazon. And just, it's a really sticky tape and just goes over the GPS and very simple. And I also recommend um, getting better propellers. Um, Phantom 3 props fit here perfectly. And I'll show you. I'll get some fat. These, these, are, um, these are the original propellers. That it comes with, and they're much, they're much, they're not as long as the Phantom propellers. And the Phantom, these are Phantom 3 propellers right here. The Phantom 3 propellers will give it more lift. And since this is carrying a heavy load, you want more lift. And these require an acorn nut, and you have to tighten it. And this is self tightening. So for me, self tightening is such a better deal. So, I think it goes this way. Does it go this way? No, it goes this way. Yep, you can see, it's self-tightening. So, on these props, you just put these with self-tighten like that. 
and you can see a tiny bit. And then you'll get the black ones. It makes it makes a big difference in time wise than using an acorn nut and a wrench to tighten them up. Because this will require you to stick this in and get a wrench and tighten it up. And it, it, it just doesn't fit in my bag. So I, I have to remove the propellers. And these these are so much quicker. If I go on like this, I'm done. And as and as I turn it on, it keeps it keeps it tight. The only thing is, as you can see right here, the propellers do come close, very close to the fuselage. Not so much in the front. You can see it's pretty, pretty close to the front. But the rear, it comes very close to the rear, you know. And um, it doesn't hit it, but it's extremely close. You can see how close Gosh. that is. It's Gosh. like millimeters. There are times when the wind will get it, and I can hear a little bit of a, like a little bit of a clip. But it's, it's not a problem. It's, it's, it's safe and it's not a problem, you know. Eventually this will wear out a little bit, but um, it, it goes in and it doesn't hit it at all. You might hear it once in a while. If you, tr if you are really quick, you might hear a little bit, but I haven't really, to be honest with you, I haven't heard it. So this is it. This is my Franken Phantom and I'm going to do a quick flight with it. Just stay tuned and here we go. Flight. Okay guys, we're back in the field. Um, welcome back. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So, I just want to go over transmitter. Um, a lot of buttons to know. It's good to label your transmitter. This button right here is your high and low rates. There's only two. There's only two rates. And this button right here is automatic takeoff and automatic land. And to do that, you must have it armed. And to arm the motors, you have to go this way or inwards that way. And this normal trim buttons here. This is your power switch. It actually has a little hole here for a lanyard, which is pretty neat. And there are some buttons here. There's um, a button right here for picture, if you have their camera. If you have the SEMA uh, XAC camera, it will be compatible to it. But we, we're, we're using our own gimbal, so we, it won't work for us. And this button right here is for video. That won't work for us either, because we're not using their camera. But this button right here is headless mode. And it has a true headless mode because it uses GPS and it will start to beep and it will come back and forth side to side regardless of which direction the headless is facing. This middle button right here is the return to home. If it has GPS lock, it will return to home to you and it will land where it took off. And you can control the GPS by this button right here. This turns it on and, and also turns it off. And when you have it off, it has altitude hold. So the quadcopter will be no longer locked in GPS. It will just be floating horizontally, but it will be taken by the wind. So it's pretty good to have if you want to shut off the GPS and go a little bit faster. On the manual, um, it says these two buttons are follow me and circle me. Um, that is not true. I guess they wanted to do that, but they changed their mind. This is the last version of the X16, and there is a new banging toys x21 coming out um, and it will have the follow me and circle me this tra this transmitter does not have uh, a GPS to follow you you need a GPS in your transmitter to follow you I did open up the transmitter and the antenna this is actually a true antenna a lot of times these hybrid toy slash hobby gray quadcopters the antennas are just laying around here somewhere and all that but it's actually in here which is it was really a good surprise, so I didn't have to mod it or anything. Um, I know you guys already saw the mods I did. You can see it. I actually put tape in the bottom to give it more orientation. I put tape over here and the battery you can see it right here it's a two cell battery which i said before and all it needs is a two cell battery 
and I'm using the Hubson H52E, which is smaller and lighter. And that's it. We're ready for takeoff. And I'm using Phantom props to give it more lift because it's a much heavier quad. So bear with me while I put the props and we'll be right back. All right, so we have the props on and it's pretty simple. They, they spin right on, they self tightening. So what we got to do is um, turn on the transmitter. We turn on the transmitter first. Actually, this is a little different. We actually turn on the quadcopter first. So let's get a battery. Uh, and this is a neat backpack that I got online. It fits perfectly. And I like to label the batteries so I know which one I use first so I don't repeat. See, it's a good idea. This is a three cell battery. It's the same batteries that has been used for the original X16 and the second version and the third version. And actually they're using the same battery for the X21 that's coming out this month. So that's pretty good. You don't have to buy new batteries. You can just keep using the same batteries. So we'll stick the battery in here. And it's a banana plug and let it initialize and look for GPS while it's doing that. So we're just sticking the battery in there nice and tight, make sure it's tight. So these lights will blink telling you that it's acquiring GPS. So it's searching now for GPS and when it becomes steady, it has enough GPS lock. So we'll wait for that. It might take a few minutes because this is a new environment. Um, if, if you go to an environment often it will remember your spot but this is the first time that the quadcopter is here so it's searching for GPS and it might take a few minutes so you got to be patient wait for the steady lights and uh, once it's steady we can do a uh, compass calibration and a gyro calibration and to do that while we're waiting when you do a compass calibration I mark the transmitter you can see the red dots here and here you hold it like this and then it will start to blink and you do a 360 on a quadcopter like this and then you go nose over three times like that and then three times fuselage and then you put it down steady and it will stop blinking. It already acquired GPS so you can see the lights are steady so it acquired GPS. I'm going to turn on the transmitter and uh, let it bind and by doing that it's just by pushing down you hear a little beep. So what we're going to do first is calibrate the compass. So it's kind of hard to see with the sunlight. It is a beautiful day today, but you can see these green lights are steady. So when I start the compass calibration, it will start to blink. So we'll hold it like this and just wait for it to blink. And let's see, we might not be buying. I don't think we're buying. All right, so I just got to remove the battery. I might have taken too long with the battery and the transmitter. So let's uh, let's get bind first. Let's get that binded and turn on transmitter. And let's turn it on just to see. Yeah. So now we're bind. So let's shut it off. All right. So we're definitely bind now. For some reason, I didn't. I, I wasn't buying. So now it, it knows where I am. So you can see how quick that took to lock on GPS. It didn't take as long as last time. It remembers where I was. So now I have steady, steady lock on on the lights, meaning that the GPS has been acquired. So now let's comp, let's do a um, a compass calibration. And so to do that, we just like I said before, I marked it over here. You hold the throttle this way, and you hold the throttle that way. And you see it's blinking. So while it's blinking, we'll do 360 one time, two times, three times, and then nose over one time, two times, it's a, three times, and fuselage like that. Two times like that. 
and we put it down and it should stop blinking. It's looking for GPS again and it quickly found GPS. Awesome sauce. So now I like to re reset it. So I'm going to clear it so it will stay in memory. Turn it on. Find it. GPS is it's acquiring GPS again, but it should be really quick because this is the third time it's been turned on here and it should remember where it is. Uh, I'm going to test to see if I'm buying by it's already got GPS. That's really fast. I'm going to test to see if I'm buying and I am buying. So I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to do one more calibration, one more safety calibration. And you do this when you're in level ground. This is fairly level ground. This is to calibrate the gyros, the 6 axis gyro. And to do that, I marked it, the black dots. You just hold the throttle this way and that way, and it will start to blink. The lights should blink. It's hard to see. Yes, it's blinking. So that means it just calibrated the level. So now it re recalibrated the gyros. So now we're basically ready to fly. So I'm going to turn on the gimbal and let that initialize. And it should be right here. Let's see if I can do it. It's hard for me to see. Yep, here it is. Let me just, uh, before I do that, let me uh, take off the lens cap. <laughs> turn on the Xiaomi. And it's, is it on? Yes. It's a beautiful bright day in the neighborhood and it's so bright that it's hard to see the lights. So I'm double tap it, just turn on the video. Let me see. Try again. Is it blinking? Yes, it is blinking. So now it's recording. So now we can turn on the gimbal. And it's a nice pond over here. It's called Westbrook Pond. And it's very pretty. And we should be able to get a nice footage of it. So now, it takes a little while for the gimbal to, you, you can see it just walk up and um, steady itself. And you can see how it keeps itself level. If I go this way, I go that way, forward and back. The gimbal will keep itself level. So it's pretty cool. And that's it. Let's get this going. And we're all ready. We got GPS lock. Uh, let's arm the motors. We're going to go this way. Awesome. And let's do an automatic takeoff. So by pressing and holding this button. And we'll just raise it up a little bit. And let's just, let's keep, we'll watch it and see if it's, uh, if it starts going like a total ball flush or drifting away, then you should bring it down. There's something wrong with your calibrations. Right now we're at GPS lock. So she's, she, there is a breeze coming this way, but she's holding steady. I'm just gonna yaw a little bit to the right. I'm gonna yaw to the left, just to see how she feels. And I let go of the joysticks. You can see she's pretty steady. There's a slight drift from, from the breeze, which is coming at us nose-wise, but there's this, you know, she's pretty steady. Keep an eye on her. She's not perfectly steady, but she's fighting a little breeze, but she looks good. She looks very good. She looks very good. So, all right, guys, let's, let's test out that gimbal and see how it looks. So we're going to bring her up. And you should be able to see the pond over here. It's called Westbrook Pond. It's a very pretty pond. And we'll, we'll just uh, hover. I'm about, I'll say 60 meters up right now. Let's bring her up a little higher.
Alright. So, I'm going to rotate, get a little view of the area. Over there is the river, Kanakwat River. And I'm going to head towards it slowly. And uh, so it could be a steady shot. Now I don't have FPV on her, that's the next mod. Right now I can only fly line of sight, but she has good range, very good range. I'm going to actually bring her down because it's a helicopter. I don't want to be in the way in a helicopter, it's flying pretty low, so when you see a helicopter like that, you bring it down. So we're bringing it down. Alright. Alright, so we'll give it another try. Always be mindful of other aircrafts.
middle of the pond. And she have a nice view of the pond. So it's about 300 meter range. I did an antenna mod on it. And uh, should give me more than 300 meters. But I'm going to keep it around about 250. I'm about 250 meters away. Maybe 280. I still have a line of sight of her. She looks like a little tiny dot. So she's flying over the pond right now. And she's flying really good. I'm at low rates too. So it's about five mile per hour winds today. So I could go on a higher rate, but I don't want to jar it so much because then the video might be bad. I'm hoping the video is good right now. I have no way of telling because I really don't have a FPV on it. So I'm going to turn her around again and head back towards the, towards the um, pond. There she is. She is doing wonderful. I mean, for a budget quadcopter, the Bain X16 GPS normally costs $165, but I've seen it drop to like $150 to even to like $140. I mean, it doesn't come with no camera or anything, so you have to buy your own camera, and, and I recommend the Wakaria uh, 2D gimbal, but um, it is it's a great beginner quad. Before I invested into a DJI Phantom or a Mavic, uh, get one of these and, and mod it. Put camera on it. Uh, work on the antenna mod, which I did. It's very simple to do. And uh, if it goes out of range, it will come back to you. You know, it's, it's a great quadcopter. You know, I, I have no complaints. No complaints so far. The only complaint I had in the beginning is she had a hard time landing. Every time she landed, she kind of like flipped. She flipped a lot because her, her feet were so tiny. So I got the idea from my X380, the XK X380, and uh, put on those foam feet, and it's been good. I forgot to put my timer on this one. I'm so excited to fly her. So you normally get like 10 minutes flight. So it's a good idea to uh, have a timer, but she does have a, a return to home when she's low battery. So, so, all right, let's do that right now. She's hovering right there, and she's about 80 meters up, maybe 70 meters up, and I would say 300 feet away from me, 100 yards. So I'm going to do a return to home, which is right here. should come really close to where she took off and I'm not controlling it you can see and she's coming home so let's say you panic you lost orientation you don't know how to control her anymore you hit that return to home she'll come back to you it's amazing for how much this quadcopter costs it's like you can't you, you know as long as you have GPS she's right now calculating where she came where she started and she's coming down. Like I said, like this is such a great deal. I, it's at banggood.com right now. And it's so inexpensive. I highly recommend this. If you before you get into expensive quadcopters, I mean it doesn't go as far as the DJIs and all that, but it's a good it's, it has a good distance. I mean you gotta do it as far as you can see it. You know? So let's see how close she comes. We took off from there from the 
the helipad. And she's, she's darn close. Remember, she was like 100 meters away from me and 80 meters high. So she's a little bit off, but still respectable. All right. So I would say she's off by two and a half meters, six feet, eight feet. So that's not too bad. All right, let's let's put her back. Let's put her back right here. And I'm gonna shut her off. And I'm gonna shut off the camera so I can save. It's good to periodically show off the camera. All right, check the gimbal out. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna test some other features. This has a uh, headless mode. So let's check that out. Let's check the headless mode on it. So let's power up the quad. It should acquire GPS pretty fast. Turn on the transmitter. Push down to bang, and it's looking for GPS as we speak right now. And it should take no time at all because it, it's in the same spot. And it, it less than less than 30 seconds, it acquired GPS. It remembers where she is. It's incredible. I'm very impressed by how quickly her GPS um, gets picked up. And it's and I also put a GPS shielding underneath it um, to improve interference and that's an easy mod too so um, let's uh, arm the motors by pressing outwards like this and I'm gonna do a manual takeoff I'm gonna wait for this plane this over here it's, looks like a plane is landing so I'm gonna just wait for it to go by we're not even near the airport we're like 10 miles away but I, I am within range, like in the uh, United States you have to be 5 miles away from the airport, but we're 10 miles away from the airport, but it's a path that they like to take. Alright, so I'm not going to do automatic takeoff, I'm going to do a manual takeoff, I'm going to raise it up, and you can see the power she has. These are brushless motors, so it gives it a lot of power. Alright, so I'm going to go out there, follow the line. Her head is facing away from me, and her butt is facing me. I'm going to raise her up a little bit. And take her out. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to turn on headless mode. And headless mode is good for beginners. A lot of beginners don't know the front of the back or of, of the quadcopter. This will give you no head. So whatever direction she's facing, if you push back, she'll come back to you. Even if she's facing backwards, she'll still come back to you. There's no head, there's no headless mode. So we'll press this button right here, and it will beep, and I'll spin her around as I bring her back. She'll come back to me, even though she's spinning around. And I'll lower her down a little bit. The beeping is a little annoying, but... So I'm spinning her, and it's, it's keeping the general direction of that that line that we took off so anywhere she's facing and I, don't, I normally don't fly headless mode I'm not a fan of it it's good for beginners so if you lose your orientation there's another way of bringing her back you know so let's let's say she's out there and you don't know if her front or her back you turn on the headless mode and just pull pull the stick back even though she's facing the wrong direction she's sideways now 
she still comes to you, you know, generally. Although now she's going off a little bit. She lost her bearings. For some reason, she lost her bearings. But, and, and generally speaking, you know, she'll come to you. She should come to you better than that. Let's, so I'm going to shut that off. And come this way with it. And I'm going to do an automatic landing. Alright, so I'm going to press this button for an automatic landing. Let's see if that works. And she should come down automatically by herself. And she is slowly automatic landing. And it's a awesome. And she shuts off the propellers, which is great. Sometimes you get quadcopters that come down automatically and the propellers idle very slowly, but this one shuts off. So I'm, again, I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed for what she costs and what you get, and I highly recommend it for a beginner quad.